Hey guys, welcome back. This is our lecture on the metric system. All right, so the base units of the metric system, we have four main quantities that every other concept in physics is going to be based on. So it's important we know these ones. We got mass, we got the gram. The gram is in symbols of G. One gram is about equivalent to one paperclip. We got length. The base unit of length is the meter. Meter is about three feet. Show with an M. Volume, our base unit of volume is the liter. It's an L. It's also equal to meter cubed because volume, remember, from geometry is length times width times height. All right, time is in seconds, just like the English system. Differences in the metric system, we use prefixes. Base 10 instead of using minutes and hours. So what we're going to do is, with these four base quantities, we are going to try and find the units of more complex concepts in physics. So we talked about velocity recently. Velocity is displacement over time. Displacement is a unit of length. And unit of lengths we just found out are in meters. So the unit of velocity, because it's length over time, should be in some form of meters over seconds. All right? Units of velocities must be in forms of meters over seconds. Our equation tells us that. Acceleration is velocity final minus velocity initial over time, change in velocity with time. We just found out that velocity is meters over seconds. Time we know is seconds. So meters over seconds minus meters over seconds divided by seconds. We're going to get meters over seconds divided by seconds. And that becomes meters over seconds squared. So the units of acceleration are meters over seconds squared. And we can get that from our four base quantities. Incredible. Force. Newton's second law says the net force on an object is equal to its mass times acceleration. The units of force are newtons. Well, what's a newton? It has to agree with the equation, which has to agree with our net quantities. Mass is in grams. So a form of grams is the kilogram. Acceleration is meters over second squared. We just found that out. So a newton is equal to kilograms times meters over second squared, or it's equal to 1,000 grams meters over second squared. All right. The metric system is great because it uses prefixes. Let's go over a couple so we're familiar with them. So giga is 1 billion, 1 billion base units of our metric system. Mega is a million, right? It's equal to 1 million base units with a big M. That's how we show it. Big G for giga. Kilo, one of our most popular, is a K. It means, it means 1,000 of our base unit. Hecto, H, 100 of our base units. Deca, DA, 10 of our base unit. Deci is one-tenth of our base unit. Centi, 100th, like century. Milli, 1,000th, like millennium. Micro, 1 millionth. And nano, 1 billionth. All right? So let's get some practice. A kilogram is equal to the symbol K. We know that gram is G, so the kilogram symbol is kg, and that's equal to 1,000 1, grams. Megaliters, mega is capital M, that's 1 million, so this is capital M, L for milliliters. All right, let's let you try hectometers. Hectometers is 100, that's HM. Go ahead and try deca second. All right, that's D A S. 10 seconds, 10 of our base unit. Try centimeter. That's CM, right? Meter is M, centi is 100th of our base unit. Milligram, that's MG, 1,000th of our gram. And nanosecond, that would be P S. 1 billionth of our second. Easy enough. All right, so if we wanted to do conversions, though, how would we do that? Well, our steps for solving 
metric system conversions is always to write out what we want to know, and then looking up our table with our prefixes. So we want to find grams. We know that we have 150 kilograms. We write that out. Then we write our conversion factor. Well, kilo means 1,000. Grams is G. So let's look over here. All right, 1,000. So one kilogram equals 1,000 grams. We apply some dimensional analysis. We see we have a kilogram on the bottom, a kilogram on the top. Those cancel, and we're just left with grams. So we get 150,000 grams. All right, let's do the next one on your own. Go ahead and try and convert 175 centiliters to liters. All right, our answer is 3.75 liters. Why? Centiliters, there's 100 centiliters and one liter. We write our conversion factor, centiliters cancel, we're left with 375. All right, so this will be a challenge problem for you. What I'd recommend is write out what you want to know, write out what you have, convert to grams first, 1,000 millimeters, convert to meters first is one meter, and then from our base unit back to our desired units, okay? So what if we wanted to convert into the metric system from imperial or the metric system into imperial? Again, write out what you want to know, inches. Write out what we have, 1.5 meters. Write out our conversion factor. In this case, we have a handy chart that says one meter is 39.37. So one meter is 39.37 inches. All right. Dimensional analysis says meter on the top, meter on the bottom. Those cancel. And we get our overall answer in our remaining units, inches. All right. Go ahead and solve this last one on your own. Our answer is 600,000 milliseconds. Why? With our conversion factors, we see dimensional analysis has everything cancel out, oops, everything cancel out except for our milliseconds right here. All right, final example. You have been hired to ensure that the amount of uranium U-235 delivered to the U.S. nuclear power plant in Palo Verde is exactly 4.5 kilograms. How many ounces of U-235 should you have? One gram equals 0 0.3, 0 0.035 three ounces. All right, we read out what we want to know. How many kilograms do we have? Oh, nope. How many ounces do we have? What we do have, 4.5 kilograms. We're going backwards. All right, we said one kilogram is 100 grams. Wait, no, that's not right. Uh-oh, 